In today's video, I have some amazing styling hacks to share with you. I think there are gonna be some hacks in here that you've never heard of before. Some of these are things that I've done for years. Some of them are things I've found on blogs and a couple of things I found on TikTok as well that kind of blew my mind. All of the hacks that I share in today's video are to do with fashion and clothing. Some of them are styling hacks. Some of them are cleaning hacks. Some of them are organization hacks. So make sure you do stick around to the end because you are not gonna to wanna to miss any of these. And if this is your first time here, welcome my name is Emily and I make styling videos on how to dress better with an emphasis on slow fashion so if that's something that you like then don't forget to subscribe and for those returning thank you so much for continuing to support my work Okay, so we're gonna start with probably one of my favorite styling hacks. And you may have heard of this one before because I've shared it on my channel before, but I'm gonna add two little bonus hacks to the end of this hack. So we're gonna start with how to put on your clothes without getting your makeup on them. I'm also gonna show you how to take it off without getting makeup on it. So here, as you can see, I have a pristine white t-shirt and a full face of makeup. I've got myself a silky scar and I'm going to throw that over my head. And then I'm putting my top on as normal. You can do this with turtlenecks as well. It works really well. Once the top is on, I'm just pulling out that silk scarf and voila, I've got my t-shirt on without any makeup on. Using a thin silky scarf is good as well because it's very gentle against the face and it doesn't take your makeup off. So you've got your t-shirt on, you've worn it for a full day and now you want to take it off. It's so simple. All you have to do is the exact same thing but in reverse. So you throw that silk scarf back over your head and then you grab the front part and tuck it in at your neck. Then you take off your t-shirt as normal and voila, the silk scarf has protected your t-shirt and your face once again. As you can see, there is absolutely no damage on my white t-shirt, but let's say maybe you do not have a silky scarf on hand, or maybe you're in a change room at a shop. Ladies, if you have long hair, then you have another option. Basically, you wanna use your hair in the same way that you use that silky scarf, tip it forward and use your hair as the protecting shield for the clothes. As you can see, it worked just as well as the silky scarf. Actually, one of you guys told me about this when I released another styling video months and months ago, and I've been using this ever since. So thank you for sharing that tip with me and for passing it on to everyone else. Once again, getting off the t-shirt is exactly the same. Just use your hair and stuff it down the front of your t-shirt and take the t-shirt off as normal. So the next styling hack is just a little different way of wearing your scarf around your neck. Wrapping your scarf around like this is totally fine, but it can look a little messy and it can kind of get uneven as you move throughout the day. So instead, I would recommend wrapping it around in the same kind of manner. However, really concentrate on when you make that first wrap, trying to keep that scarf even and not twisted up the top. And then both lengths that are coming down, one should be slightly longer than the other. And then you're gonna wanna tie a little knot at the front and then use the scarf to kind of sit on top and slightly cover that knot up. To me, this is just a much more elegant, clean way of wearing your scarf. It's like you've actually made an effort rather than just throwing it around your neck. I also found this little scarf video on TikTok, which I'll bring up on the screen. This is another chic way of wearing your scarf instead of just messily throwing it around your neck. This girl brought out another video, which I thought was quite cool. And it's basically turning your handbag into a backpack. So I tried to replicate it, but um, you'll see that it doesn't quite quite work in my situation. That is because the handles on my bag are a little too short. As you can see, it kind of looks like a backpack, but if the straps were a little longer, it would sit flat on my back. Unfortunately for me, this doesn't work with this bag. But if you had a bag that had longer straps, this would be really cool. I, however, will be wearing my bag normally, but you might be able to do this with yours at home. So the next hack is something that I've done for years, and it's got something to do with lint brushes. So firstly, on the screen now, you're gonna see the lint brush that I have at home, which is basically a little brush to pick up all those little bits of fluff that get on all your garments. I think everyone should have one of these in their home. They're fantastic. The one that I have is amazing and I will link it in the description below. However, sometimes we don't always have a lint brush on hand. What if you're that person that always picks up the damn cat at the party and all of a sudden you're covered in cat hair, but the host doesn't have a lint brush. However, the host does have some sticky tape or better yet, packing tape. So what you wanna do here is pull out a piece of packing tape and you wanna wrap it around and stick it back onto itself with the sticky side on the outside. You then wanna pop that over your fingers and use that as your own lint brush. You can wipe that 
all over anything to take off all the cat hair and the fluff or anything that might have got stuck to your clothes. And voila, you are all clean again. So the next hack I have for you is combating those yellow sweat marks on your white t-shirt. I don't like to use bleach in my household, so I'm always trying to look for different ways of getting rid of stains out of white items. So we're gonna test out something different today that I've never tried before. So I found this hack on Who Want Wear on one of their blog posts. The blog post said to use equal parts lemon juice to equal parts water mix that up and apply that directly to the stain and then leave that for at least 30 minutes before washing it once 30 minutes was up you can wash it normally now I wash everything except for sheets and towels in cold water cold water is really good for stains and it's just way better for the environment and for your bank account so I'm throwing that into the wash and I'm also adding in a bunch of other white items that I had just so it wasn't a waste with the water and then I'm adding in my eco-friendly laundry powder as as well. So I've set that to a normal cold wash and we're just going to let that wash and we'll come back to that in a moment. The next hack is one to do with belts. This is a beautiful leather belt that I found second hand. As you can see it is slightly too big for me. So I want to make an extra hole in this belt so that they fit me better. So yes it's time to get the power tools out. <laughs> I'm measuring up where I want the hole to go. I've just decided to make it an even gap with all the other holes. I've placed the belt down on a placemat to protect the table and I'm drilling through the belt. This is a 100% leather belt, so it took me a few times to drill it. I drilled at the front, I drilled at the back, I drilled at the front, I drilled at the back, over and over. <laughs> And as you can see, the hole looks pretty nice and clean and just like any of the other holes, really. Just obviously be careful when you're doing things like this. It fits me now, heaps better, and I'm pretty happy with that. That is an option if you can find a belt that's too big for you. Don't worry, you do have options. So the next fashion hack that I wanna share with you guys is something that I have known about for years, but I'm gonna be honest with you, it's not my favorite fashion hack, but some of you guys brought it up with me in a video maybe a month ago and and said that I could do this with my jacket. I already knew about it, but I've been reluctant to share it, but it appears that some of you guys do like it and find it really helpful. So I think I should definitely share it to a wider audience. And that is how to keep up your jacket sleeves when they keep falling down. So I first came across this hack when I was back modeling in London and I was doing online shoots and they would always do this to keep up my jacket sleeve. So they would get either an elastic band or a hair band and they would pop it over the jacket. This would act as like a little grip and then you can roll up the jacket sleeves and just pop them under the elastic to be held together. It's a bit fiddly and you've got to kind of find that in between of the messy, neat look. But once you get the hang of it, it actually does look really nice. Like you've put in a bit more effort to your outfit. However, the reason that I don't love this hack is because I get this like uncomfortable comfortable feeling when I have an elastic around that part of my arm. I don't know, I just don't like the feeling of it. It's a weird, weird thing. That's just me personally and I think other people don't mind this. So I think it's just something that you have to try at home and see what you think. But it does look really cool and as you can see it just changes the outfit, gives it that cool vibe and the sleeves aren't falling down, which is fantastic. So the wash is done and I think it's time to check my t-shirt. At a first glance I could tell that it definitely has helped but not massively. Those yellow stains are still pretty visible and it just hasn't done the job that I expected it to after reading that blog post. Well that's a fail. But never fear, I have a plan B. I'm going to try something else. This time I'm going to try creating a little paste. So I found on another blog post to mix a tablespoon of salt with three tablespoons of bicarb soda and then a tablespoon of vinegar. As you can see this is like a little science experiment. The vinegar and the bicarb are bubbling up. That makes it a bit of fun as well. I'm mixing it up as a paste and then adding in one tablespoon of water as well. As you can see there is an intruder coming to see what is going on and I just had to go pick him up and get him out of the way of this science experiment. <laughs> So then I applied the paste onto the t-shirt and this time I put on a timer for an hour and 30 minutes to let that paste sink in. Once the timer was up, I popped it in the wash and I decided to add in three spoonfuls of the powder. Now this is what the box said to use for stained items. So of course I trusted it and I walked away. However, as you can see, three spoonfuls may have been a little too much because um, yeah, the, the foam was coming out of the drain on the bathroom floor. But we're all good. We've 
clean that up and I will get back to you with the results in just a moment. But first, on to some more styling hacks. Next up, we have the elastic band or hair tie styling hack. You may have seen this before. It has been shared quite a lot. But the thing is with this is that it works differently with different items in your closet. So you might try it with one t-shirt. It looks really bad. And then you might try it with a jumper and it looks really cool. There are lots of different options you can do with this styling hack. You can use the elastic band and tie the back up of your t-shirt and tuck it under and try make that as neat as possible. Or you can do this and use two elastic bands and tie on either side of your hips and then tuck them under. I kind of like this way because if you're going to have any messiness it's going to be on the side and not like at the front or at the back. Depending on how clean you can get a t-shirt I do like the two on the side. The other option is don't use an elastic band and use your bra instead. So tuck the t-shirt under your bra. This is good if you want like a little cropped t-shirt look. You can tie it up a bit higher in the front if you're wanting to show off a bit of skin as well. You can also do this trick with oversized jumpers. It can be a really good way to help you minimize the bulk of an oversized jumper. So rather than just doing a half tuck, you can do the half tuck plus doing the two ties on either side and it just gets rid of some of that excess bulk. Next up, I'm putting a jumper over a skirt and after giving it a little half tuck, I'm using the elastic band to tie the back up and tuck it under. I think it actually looks really neat with this jumper. Those folds are really nice. The thing is when you're wearing jumpers with spring or summer skirts, sometimes your legs can get really, really cold. So what I'd like to do with these outfits is to have a pair of thermals on hand. So once you put thermals on, you just wanna pull up the ankles so that you can't see them. If you don't have thermals, you could even wear a pair of bike shorts or something underneath just to help take away that coolness if the breeze does go up your skirt. Then all you need to add is a pair of ankle boots, a cute bag, some sunnies, and you're ready to go. As you can see, you can move around in this so much and no one will ever know that you have your thermals on underneath your skirt. The skirt and jumper outfit can also be created with a dress. This is something that I love to do often to help transition my dresses into the cooler months. So here, as you can see, I'm popping my cream jumper over my dress. Of course, I'm using the silk scarf. When you don't tuck it in at the waist, it does kind of just look a bit frumpy. It just takes a tiny little styling tweak to bring this outfit to life more. So what you wanna do is you wanna make it look like that jumper is tucked in at the front. This dress that I'm wearing has a belt on it already. So I'm just using that to half tuck my jumper in at the front and at the back a little bit. As you can see, that looks heaps better than just wearing the jumper out. However, if you don't have a belt already on your dress, it's fine. This look can still be achieved in multiple different ways. You can use a different belt and pop that on top of the jumper and then pull the jumper out out at the front and at the back to create a cropped jumper look. Or instead of popping the belt on top of the jumper, you just pop it on top of the dress and then just front tuck, half tuck as usual. If your jumper is a little loose at the back and keeps falling out, you can then get your hair tie and use that at the back to just tighten up the waistband a little bit and ensure the jumper stays in place. Then once again, all you need is a cute bag, some sunglasses, and you are ready to go. If you're any Anything like me or if you are a crazy cat mum and you have a crazy cat then you probably often get a lot of pulls in your items. I've got a couple of solutions for that and these were great solutions that were suggested by one of you guys in a recent video of mine so thank you so much for that. The two options are the first is if you have a big knit like the one that I'm handling here. For those little pulls you can just slowly pull outwards the fabric and basically what you're doing here is you are pulling the knit back into place. You're tightening that knit. As you can see I've just slowly pulled around and around and it's back in place as usual and you wouldn't know that that was there. For items that aren't those bigger knit items, you want to get yourself a pin from your sewing kit. Here I have my very small but perfect sewing kit. It is in a old honey container. I have my scissors, my pin cushion, my needles, my thread, and I have some spare pins at the bottom. Oh, and inside I also have this tape measure, which is definitely something you guys want to have on hand if you are doing a lot of online shopping, just to ensure that you're buying 
the correct items and the correct size. These also double up great as a cat toy. However, Fanta wasn't that interested in it today. So what you want to do for those little pulls is you want to grab a needle and once you find your pull, you want to very delicately just use that needle to push that pull back in the other way. So easy, your items of clothing are going to look so much better. But hold on, what if you drop that pin on the carpet? You've dropped the pin on the carpet, you've got tiny little kids or tiny little animals running around and you're like, oh no, I cannot see it anywhere. Well, do I have the solution for you? So this hack is, it's a little far-fetched, I'm not gonna lie, but I found this one once again on a who, what, where blog. So what you wanna do here is get a vacuum, get a pair of stockings and you wanna pop the stockings over the end of the vacuum and then use this to find the small item. <laughs> Here you can see it has picked up the pin perfectly. I'm not gonna lie, I saw this pin with my eyes before I found it with the vacuum, but that is because obviously I dropped this pin on purpose. But hey, who knows, this could help you potentially in the future when you drop something small, maybe like the back of an earring on the ground that you can't find anywhere, then make sure you keep this little hat up in your head and you never know, it might come in handy. So the next hack I have for you is something that I have done for years and I absolutely love this hack and it has to do with wardrobe organization. Now that is using your space to the best of your ability and using command hooks. So these are those little sticky hooks that can be taken off and on and moved wherever you like. They're usually used for paintings but I use them for absolutely everything in my wardrobe. I use them for handbags, I use them for hats, for jewelry and for belts. These hooks have actually traveled with me for years from London to Melbourne to Sydney. I've had them for ages and I just keep reusing them and they're so great for wardrobe organization. Okay guys, it's now the evening time and as you can see I have a face mask on and I'm almost ready for bed. I have pulled the t-shirt out and it is looking so much better. There's still a little bit of yellow on there but this time definitely helped. I don't know, it may have been the bubbles coming out of the drain or it may have been the bicarb soda paste that I made. I don't know, but I still think I can do better. We've got one more thing to try to get rid of the rest of these yellow stains and that is hydrogen peroxide. Now it sounds worse than it actually is, but I will let you do your own research on hydrogen peroxide. It's basically just water and oxygen in its purest form. So it is meant to be the more safe option than bleach. And it is hands down way better to use than bleach. It's also used for antiseptic. So you can just buy it from your local pharmacy. So what I've done is I've mixed equal parts hydrogen peroxide, to equal parts water, and then I have added this on top of the stain. I then got some bicarb soda and sprinkled that on top of it. And then once again, I left it for 30 minutes to soak. I put it on a normal wash, added in some more whites and some more detergent, and then I just crossed my fingers and let it do its magic. Moment of truth. It's still a little yellow, but definitely better. This is proof that the internet lies. I think the bicarb paste and the excessive amount of laundry detergent probably made the biggest impact, but I would encourage you to use eco-friendly laundry detergent if you are gonna try this at home. Nonetheless, the t-shirt is looking heaps better and I didn't have to use bleach. If you wanna see more of my fashion styling videos, you can watch them up on the screen here now. Don't forget to spread kindness this week and I will see you in my next video. Bye.